Good afternoon. You are at lunch with Laura. I hope you have your lunches ready and that you're ready to learn a little bit and see a card demonstration. The card I'm going to be demonstrating today is this beautiful fall card. I've used some different colors to achieve the look of the leaves and I'm going to teach you how to do that. and I'll turn my sound off on my computer. And the beautiful stamps that we're using today is called Life is Beautiful. It can be used for all seasons. You have snowflakes, fall leaves or spring leaves, uh, rain, three sentiments, life is beautiful, hello, and thinking of you. Now, let me show you what you're going to need for this card. This card stock I'm using today is Stampin' Up's Very Vanilla. And I guess I didn't really introduce myself. I'm getting ahead of the game. My name is Laura Lee Collet. I'm an independent Stampin' Up demonstrator. And I'm here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where it's hot and humid. Hope it's cooler where you are. To achieve the look of this card, first of all, you're going to start with your very vanilla. It's cut at five and a half, I'm sorry, eight and a half by five and a half. I've scored it down the middle, so I'm going to give that a nice edge with my bone folder. And I'm going to set that aside. The card front is four by five and a quarter. And this is what we're gonna be using to stamp the tree and the leaves. Now, let me show you the tree again. This set is a distinctive stamp set. And what that means is that they've taken the stamp and when you stamp it, you get a photo quality image. The, you can see the uh, little outlines of the trees that make it a 3D look. Before, or in some of our past stamp sets, the only way we've been able to get this is with two-step or three-step stamping. So this really makes a lovely card. So, I am going to, this is a large stamp, and I'm going to be using the stamp apparatus today. Now, this little gizmo gives you a stamp image that if you don't get it good the first time, you can go back and it holds it in its place. I put little red marks there so I'll know where to place my card stock. I'm gonna put it right there. You wanna make sure that the paper does not come up. Now I'm using two different inks today. For the tree, I'm using soft suede and our Stampin' Up! pads open just like a compact, and then you slide it back. They're stiff at first. The more you use them, the easier they get to open. And what I'm going to do is stamp up my tree real good with the ink. Then I'm going to fold it over, mash it down, All right, and it did great. If I wanted to, I could re-ink it and redo it, and it would be in the exact same spot, but I don't think it's necessary. So I'm gonna close up my ink pad. That's a good thing to remember so that you don't get your, um, your card stock in it. I've done that way too many times, so that's a good hint for you. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. And the next thing I'm going to do is stamp my leaves. So, I struggled and struggled with how to get the look of different colored leaves. It's very rare that you see a, a, a fall tree when the leaves start changing colors where you've got green, 
and then red over here, yellow. I wanted them to be all mixed up. So I came to the conclusion that I was gonna try a different method that I had learned at a crop and sulfur I went to last October. And the lady that taught this, and I don't remember her name, but anyway, we're, I'm just using a little salad plate or you could use a paper plate and a piece of felt. Now, I use five different colors. These are our Stampin' Ink uh, re-inkers that you would select the coordinating color and re-ink your ink pad when it's necessary, which is not very often because our pads stay really juicy. So I'm gonna start off with Cajun Craze. And I'm just gonna put a few dots around in the middle. Then I'm gonna go with Mango Melody. And there's really no rhyme or reason for what, you don't have to do them in order, in other words. This one is Daffodil Delight. And I'm just kind of filling in. It won't be quite as big as my stamp, but the more you stamp this, the more the colors run together. Now this one is Granny Apple Green. I'll put one there. So you're kind of making a little puddle. And then the last one is a soft suede and that's the color we used on the trunk. So I'm gonna put a few drops around of that. Now, this stamp set is a photopolymer stamp set, and which means it's great for easy placement. You can see through it. And you'll notice that sometimes the um, stamps will stain, but this does not affect your uh, stamping at all. Okay, I'm going to stamp right there in the middle. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna stamp there. Now, I found what worked best was to clean off your stamp before you stamp each time. Otherwise, the colors get muddled. So, I've got my stamping mist and my cleaner right there. So then I'm gonna stamp it again. This time I'm gonna go a little bit lower. So some of the leaves are gonna look like they're fluttering to the ground, and that's fine. I'm cleaning again, and I'm gonna stamp. And you can put as many or as few as you want. Okay, that did not get coverage like I wanted it to. So I'm gonna go back, do it again. But you can see how the ink is starting to come together Let's see, I think I'll go like that. Okay, and maybe one more right there at the top. Get those in there. Okay, so there you have your colored leaves. Now, wasn't that easy? And the best thing about this is, when, generally when I make cards, I don't make one card. It's very seldom. I might have a special one now and then, but I always make at least two. And usually if I'm making birthday cards, I'll go ahead and do a dozen. So this stays wet. Now see how pretty it's getting on the bottom? So the more you stamp, the bigger it's gonna get and the more the colors will go together. But this will stay damp for a very long time, and if you slip it on a paper bag, that way you won't get it on any of your projects. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is stamp this cute little birdhouse. And I love birds. My website is stamping at the bird nest, and I'll put this right here so you can look me up. I hope you will if you decide to place an order. I have a host code every month and you can uh, put that code in and I would appreciate that. This is called Cajun Craze. This is kind of a rusty 
red. And because you can see through this, I'm gonna put this little bird house hanging right there. And when you go to stamp, you want to be sure that you go straight down and straight up with no rocking. Okay, close that up. Now, you also needed a piece of vanilla for the sentiment, and I wanted it to have a layer behind it so it would really stand out. So I'm using the soft suede for it. And let me stamp the sentiment right quick, and then I'll show you what I use to cut it out. Okay, I'm using the one that says thinking of you. Now, if you've got a little uh, mistake on there, uh, you can either put an embellishment on it if it was already cut out, or you just flip it over. So I'm gonna do my stamping. Thinking of you came out beautifully. Now, I didn't have a punch or one die that would work with this. So what I ended up using to get this look was two different die sets that we have. This one is called the Little Treat Box. And I'll sh save that for another day because that is just an adorable little thing for Christmas, Halloween, and all sorts of gifts. And this die went with it. So that's the one that I'm gonna be using for thinking of you. Then for the background, I used the die called Painted Labels. Now, if you notice there's a white mark that shows where each die goes, I like to do that, especially when you've got like 15 of these little dies because they can get away from you so easily. But that lets me know I'm missing one. So that's why I do that. Okay, now let me show you what came in yesterday that I am just all over. Do you know what this is? This is the brand new Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. It folds up the handle. I'm not sure you can see that, so let me move some of my inks out of the way and back this up a little bit, or I can turn it sideways. This would be if you're a right-handed person, but if you're like me it's and lefty, it's on the other side. So, for our purpose today, I'm gonna to turn it sideways. It has two platforms that fold down flat, and this is the best secret of all. Maybe I need to, let me see if I can, no, I guess you can't do that with Facebook. So I'm gonna raise this up just a little bit so that you can see it better. And I hope that's a little bit better. Now, this is a no-brainer for all of us blondes out there. This is awesome. The plates are now numbered. So when you're making your sandwich, and because I'm using dies, this is the magnetic plate. It's going to go on the bottom. This is a full sheet of magnet so that your little dies don't jump like they did with the big shot um, magnet plate. They had strips, and that's the reason that would happen sometimes. So I'm gonna put plate one. Oh, and the, this is how I came up with this. I wasn't just a genius. Uh, for, it has d instructions for embossing folders and for die cutting. So it shows you a little diagram and says to use with the thin dies. So I'm putting one first, followed by this plate, which is number two, followed by number three. So this is the way you make your sandwich. Then you're gonna put down your card stock with your die. Now, so that 
I can keep this in place. I have a little post-it note. You can use washi tape or um, the scotch tape that doesn't isn't a permanent um, doesn't give you a permanent adhesive. And then this one, the reason I'm using it here is because I want this to be centered. And then I'm putting that die there. I'm putting, finishing off my sandwich with plate three. I'm going to push it through with, and turn the handle. And here you have that one. And that piece. Okay. So that takes care of our big shot. Well, I'm going to continue calling it the big shot. It's the cut and emboss machine. I'm folding it up. It's great for easy storage. Doesn't take up as much room. And I'll put the plates over by it. Okay, now we need to adhere the sentiment to the background. It's a good idea so that you don't get adhesive on your paper to use a silicone mat. And I want to talk to you a second about our new adhesive. And let me come back down so that you're getting a better look here. Hi, Ginger. I see you out there. Thank you for watching. Now, this is called Stamp and Seal. This is what you would use to replace the snail runner that we used to have. There is also a Stamp and Seal Plus, which gives a much heavier hold. So I'm gonna turn this over. And you want to put your finger there. If it's not sticky, take your finger and roll it until you feel the little sticky. Then you're gonna put your finger on top here. There's a little rough place for it. And break the um, piece of adhesive, kind of like we used to do with the other one that we had that was similar to this. So now if you can see it, I've got the adhesive there and I'm gonna center it on here, which is not real centered. But hey, I'm on TV, right? Oh, that's what some of my family thinks, especially my grand puppy that I'm raising. Are y'all raising any grands out there? Well, we're having a blast. So, okay, I am going to put this on with dimensionals. Oops. Right there and set that aside. Bring back over my, somehow that one got cut all the way through, so I had to pull the things off both sides. Okay, let's look at our card again. So we're gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is put dimensionals on here. Now, some of my fellow demonstrators and friends overkill with these and would just as soon almost cover the whole sheet I don't think it's necessary, so I usually put four, five, six. One in the middle is always a good idea, and that keeps it from falling in on itself. Here is my card base. Take my dimensionals off. that. You want to center that. And then I'm going to put on my, I actually think I could have done a little more stamping on this one because my sample has a few more of the colored leaves, but you get the idea there. And then I just added some of our metallic pearls. And I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool. 
This has some putty at the end and it will pick up the pearls and then you just put them down like so. And that just adds a little bit of interest to it. I think that looks really cute. So you have a tone on tone card, meaning that the card base as well as the card front is the same color. And there you have that. Now, don't forget, you always, I was a kindergarten teacher, sign your work. So I am going to take my my um, stamp that has my name on it and put my little signature at the bottom. So it says hand stamped by Laura Lee Collet, Stampin' Up Demonstrator. So there you have it for today. I um, am wanting to give you plenty of information, but also not use up your entire uh, lunchtime unless I've got something that's really more involved than this. But let me go back to this one second. This is the Take Your Pick tool. And when you order it, you get two of the putty things that screw in. And so when you get to the end of one and you just turn it a very little bit and the putty will come off. When it quits sticking, just turn it and peel that off and turn it just a little bit more. You also get, at this end, a pokey tool and a little spatula. And it also comes with two different size stylus. So you can use that for creasing your cards. Okay, uh, I would ask if there are any questions, I will look at the comments later and get back to you. But I hope you've enjoyed. This was really the first Lunch with Laura. Last week was a test run and I went through the catalog, which is now on YouTube. I will put the directions for this card and everything to make it on YouTube um, this afternoon when I get through. And again, my website is stampinatthebirdnest.com and my, the August host code is right here. If you have questions or comments, please let me know. When you go to visit my YouTube channel, please be sure to subscribe. And I hope you're enjoying it. If you have something that you would like for me to demonstrate, I'm always up for options. So have a great day. Today's Thursday and that means tomorrow is Friday and the weekend's here. Enjoy yourselves and I will see you next Thursday, 12 noon at on Facebook Live having lunch with Laura. Hope you join me again then. Bye.